We've got the kids at home. We've got a mortgage now to support in many cases. We're, we're living real life already, and we're getting this opportunity to do this awesome thing called aviation. Ern, thank you so much for coming to uh, Fly with Trent Hunt here on YouTube. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, so for the uh, folks in my audience who don't know you, which I imagine is probably all of them, um, let's start off with this. Um, you made a career change to decide to become a pilot, kind of like many of us here on the Fly with Trent channel as a career 2.0. How old were you when you decided to make that change? Yeah, thank you for welcoming me and having me on the show today. Um, I was 40 years old when I went back to aviation. Um, I had started flight training for my private pilot right out of high school. Um, so I went to flight school first. It wasn't really working out for me. And then chose to pursue medicine for the next um, some years and then came back to aviation. And what was it that brought you back to aviation? Uh, for me in particular, um, I was a paramedic and an EMS for 24 years. Um, and I still am, although not as much as I was before. And for me, it was a, it was an ambulance accident and actually in 2019, um, Thanksgiving day, we were responding to a call northbound on one of the freeways here, um, in Denver where I live. And we had two vehicles broadside us as we were crossing through an intersection, um, through the process of that and working with the workers comp docs. I had sustained some injuries from years before. Um, I had um, a nasty, rather nasty encounter with the roof of a bunker in Iraq, and uh, that ended up jarring my neck and my shoulder pretty good. Um, this accident caused more issues, unfortunately, and um, I've been able to recover. And when I was going through that process, I met with two physicians and they both were like, Hey, you know, your, your time for being a full-time paramedic is pretty much done. Um, you really need to consider career change and getting out. Um, because you, if you continue being a paramedic, we're worried that our next conversation five, 10 years from now is going to be permanent disability. Um, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay. So I went through a process took me roughly about a month um, to start looking for a different trend. Um, my wife was absolutely phenomenal during this process, and she was very supportive. And she was like, hey, you know, you keep on looking at the sky, looking at jets. You know, sometimes you say, man, I, I wish I had stayed in aviation. So she essentially started encouraging me, hey, why don't you go fly? Uh, why don't you try and go after that again? Um, and we're both like, yeah, this is a good time. Airlines are at an all time, um, hiring boom. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, back then it was pre COVID. So it was still the days of $50,000 sign on bonuses with some of the regionals and things like that. Um, just for having everything you needed as a pilot. And so she was like, I think you should go do that. So that's where I, I ended up going. That was kind of the driving event of, you know, being like, okay, yeah, I need to go back to the cockpit. Um, I missed flying for a long, long time and um, had taken a break for about 16 years, um, actually. Between 2004, when I last touched an airplane, which was a Piper Aero, um, and then kind of ran out of money. I was young, foolish like a lot of us, and I just didn't have the money to keep on flying. Um, and so I didn't touch an airplane for about 16 years as a pilot until 2020 um, when I came back in and um, that's when I started flying again. So, And so when you decided to go to uh, flight school, did you, did you, what type of school did you enroll in a part 61 or part 141? And was it a part-time effort or a full-time effort? Yeah. So um, it was a part 141 school. Um, I ended up deciding to go through Liberty University out of Lynchburg, Virginia. Um, they run a flight training affiliate program where you can essentially go at your own pace as long as you're doing it within the semesters that they have allotted for particular programs. And so I, I did it kind of part-time, but kind of full-time at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I worked a full-time job while I was going through um, flight training 
uh, ended up becoming an operations manager for an ambulance company at the end of my flight training or at the end of my university days. And that opened up the ability for me to get some student loans um, to finally get a college degree and be able to kind of check off a couple things on the boxes, if you will, of life while I was going through things. So tell me a little bit more about how that relates to financing your flight training. Because I know for a lot of people, that's a big issue. They're like, man, I really want to do this, but how the heck do I pay for it? So unpack that with as much detail as, as you can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll back up a little bit. I'd looked at another program. Um, a lot of us end up looking, I think a lot of us that are career minded, look at this program for possible avenue, um, which was to look at uh, ATP. And I looked at the ATP program um, and a few things were hurdles for me that I just couldn't pass. Um, first, ATP requires that you basically don't work um, while you're going through that program. And second was the limited financing that you could get, like through Salome, personal loans, things like that. Um, going through a program like, like Liberty through an actual university where they're awarding a college collegiate degree, um, doing those things opens up all of these student loans, uh, veterans benefits if you're a veteran, you know, all those all those benefits that you would have as a normal college student um, and be able to use the student loans, private student loans, more securely um, for whatever reason they see Liberty as being a more secure investment than they do a program like ATP. Um, yeah. So I didn't have as many problems getting the financing, um, which was something that my wife and I were up against as well. Um, you know, being a paramedic, you're not exactly rolling in, rolling in the dough and ro rolling in the cash. Um, but you, you do develop a sense of work ethic. Um, and there's many other things that I'm very thankful for, for my UMass career. Um, but when it came to financing flight training, that was a huge thing for me. Um, we owned our own home, fortunately. Uh, so the, the financial means that I ended up using to get through my training and get to where I'm at today was a combination of using private student loans. Um, we, and then also using some federal loans as well. And we did end up having to do a little bit of loans against our house as well to get through the, um, the hurdles of the cost of flight training. Um, university programs do require a certain pace and they require that you maintain that pace um, while you're going through the program. Liberty was very gracious uh, during this time. You know, we were dealing with COVID. And so um, exemptions and, you know, extensions were becoming a rule, just a normal thing for them. Yeah. And so that benefited me as well. Um, I have heard that it's a little bit tighter now, but I don't think it's that much tighter. The other thing I liked about Liberty in particular was as a first responder, they gave me a huge discount um, to be able to go through their program. So that was another benefit for me. Um, ended up being a huge blessing. And about how long, so you did the, refresh my memory, um, when you made this decision, did you have any flight hours at all? Like, did you, I, I can't remember whether you told me you'd had a private from, you know, yeah. by. Yep. Yeah, I did. I had about a hundred hours when I went back to, into uh, flight training. I'd already got my private, um, had gone through my first check ride, and that was back in 1999. Um, okay. And it was down in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, that was pre, pre Liberty. Pre Liberty, very much so. You go into Liberty, you yep. have a private pilot's license. You graduate Liberty with a commercial license and a CFI? Commercial multi engine. Um, Okay. So they didn't require CFI as part of my program. Um, okay. And CFI is something that's still kind of on my list of things that I want to do because I'm really passionate about teaching and I really enjoy teaching and passing on to other people and inspiring other people on greatness. Um, like people, people have encouraged me. So, so taking the Liberty path from the hundred hour old private pilot to a multi-engine uh, commercial rating took about how long and about how much money? That took me another approximately 70000 um to get through everything. And it ended up adding, I think it ended up adding about 200 hours or so um, to my logbook, if memory serves me correctly. 
And how, um, how many months did it take you to go through that program? That whole program took me, um, took me about 18 months, but 18. I also started with uh, college credits that were coming in from electives and a lot of my um, core uh, requirements were already knocked out from a previous degree. Um, the benefit that I received was I already had, um, I didn't have enough to meet the 60 credits that I would need for my degree. And that allows me to get my RETP um, at the thousand hours. So, okay. so let me summarize this to make sure that myself and the audience have this have a clear yeah. handle on this. You got an old private pilot's license with about a hundred hours. You decide you're going to go back to flight school. You enroll in Liberty. It takes about eighteen months and about seventy thousand dollars. You're able to finance the vast majority of that with some private student loans and some federal student loans and a little bit of home equity loans against your house. Do we have all that right? Yep. Um, and I gave you the, the wrong time frame the first time. It was about 30 months um, okay. for all that to get done. So, Okay. So the Liberty experience was about 30 months. Yes. That was, I started in January, 2020. Um, I finished my Calm multi-engine check ride January of 22. Okay. So <clears throat> having gone through that, if you were to do it again, would you take a different path or would you repeat the same path? Um, I think if I was to do it again, this is definitely, especially where I was in life. Um, I was an older student. Um, I probably would have chosen a similar path because it knocks out, uh, gives me the, the bachelor's degree as well yeah. um, for the future. When, you know, being older pilots, we are we may or may not get as much flying time as people are younger than us um, due to medical issues. Mm -hmm. And I want to stay in aviation. So having a bachelor's degree in something um, helps me be able to stay in aviation in the future. And it's starting, you see it a little bit in job requirements. It's usually an added bonus right now um, that you have your bachelor's degree completed, um, especially with the airlines stepping away from it as much as they have, but it's still, mm -hmm when you get into like the deltas and things like that, it's another point, a feather in your cap, if you will. Yeah. Okay. So by about June around June of 2022, you had your commercial multi, you were not the CFI, I think right. still the CFI. Still not a CFI. What type of work did you start doing? So when I finished in June of 22, I started working on um, obtaining employment. Um, we put all this money into my pilot ratings. I'd gone through the training. Now it was time to start getting the hours so we can move on to the next step. And I was fortunate enough. Um, I started my CFI, started, kept on flying for a little bit, and that started adding more hours to my, to my logbook. Eventually was picked up by EagleView um, okay. doing aerial survey in a Cessna 172. The, I was on four-week rotation, so four weeks out, two weeks home. Mm -hmm. Um, it was not, it's like a lot of low, low time pilot jobs is minimal pay. Mm -hmm. Um, especially compared to my prior career. Um, it took a, a decent pay cut to go with them, but my hours started accumulating very quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, Christmas of, uh, 2022, I was at 500 and had already crossed the 500 mark and by, and today, um, I'm now 821. So um, from Eagle View, I uh, decided to try and pursue another company um, that does air airborne research um, for scientific means, uh, doing things in twin otters. And during class, uh, there was four of us in the class. They had only chosen to pick up four pilots for the season. They lost their contract. And um, two of us ended up not being able to continue with them and lost our positions. Um, the other two, as far as I know, they ended up f finishing the last season with them, flying the Twin Otter. That was a fun airplane. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was fun flying a, a twin uh, turbo prop and getting that experience and getting some hours in that. And it was great people that I was working with. The, the people that run that company, they're really awesome. Um, from there, I went back to the drawing board, working my CFI again and working full time as a paramedic, picking up as many shifts as I could. I'd switched down to 
um, through the course of time, I had been laid off as an operations manager, was now a part-time paramedic for a friend of mine and his company, um, and was being able to do that pretty well was when I was with, with Eagle View because he was very understanding. Like I would be gone for four weeks and he wouldn't be bugging me for shifts at all. Um, then when I'd come home, I'd work a couple shifts and go back out, which was awesome that he supported me in that way. And the, um, so from about March of last year until July, I kept on looking for low time positions. Um, in June, I was offered two positions and I actually started one um, before I ended up leaving the company that I was working for to work for the company I'm working for now. Um, mm -hmm. So the company that I was working for before this company that I work for now, I was, uh, they wanted me to be their chief pilot. They really liked my operational experience from my background. Um, they were brand new to aviation, brand new to starting up what they wanted to do. Um, they were going to be doing prisoner transport with a twin engine Cessna. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, I did my job well enough that I was able to get them, uh, um, aligned with a company out of Pennsylvania, um, to help manage their aircraft and take a lot of the stress off of their shoulders. When they started finding out that they had to be part 135, go through the 135 filing process, mm -hmm. you know, everything like that, things that they weren't anticipating, but they were able to find this other company that other companies been able to provide them airplanes, been able to help them do transports. Um, things ended up really being, it turned out really well for them. And then when this company that I work for now came knock, knocking um, and offering me pilot and command time in a complex high performance aircraft, um, a single engine, so it's not multi-engine, but the ability to rack up a lot of hours again, I jumped at that opportunity I was able to go from, I think I was at 620-ish when I started with them to where I am at 821 today. So, And what type of plane is that you're flying? Uh, I now fly a Mooney, um, a Mooney Ovation. So we have two Mooney Ovations, one Mooney Bravo. These are fun planes. Um, and we get up and cruise. We're cruising at 178, 180 true. Um, mm -hmm. Ground speeds can be in, around that you know, just shy of 200, mm -hmm. sometimes a little bit over 200 knots. Um, and you're learning a little more about aviation because you're learning about a faster aircraft, slowing down for approaches, mm -hmm. um, you know, all those things that come with flying bigger, faster aircraft. So absolutely. So let's conclude with this. The journey that you're on from the 250 hours to the 1500 that everybody's you know trying to get to is there any major lessons or mistakes or skid marks or bruises or scrapes or scratches or what have you that, that came your way and so if you were giving your your you know six month younger self advice you know is there, is there anything that you would say to yourself oh watch out for this don't do that you should do this etc yeah. Um, I think it, one of the major ones that we all learn as commercial pilots is perseverance. Um, perseverance is what makes or breaks this game. It's the continuing to show up when things aren't going well, when things aren't going your way. Um, at this point, I've been through one instrument, or I went through one check card failure, which was my instrument rating. Mm -hmm. um, and but I kept on going and I've made some awesome friends along the way. Um, the other thing that I think I really wish that I'd done differently, if I was to look back at things and be like, Hey, maybe, maybe don't jump for that other company. Um, you know, as fast as I did with this, as I did before, um, the friends that I left at, um, the pre at Eagle view, um, they're still flying, the uh they've ended up flying the aztec um mm -hmm. and they're flying getting multi-engine um time built up in their log book which is awesome um and that been you what's up and that would have been you if you'd stayed it would have been me yep a yep. little bit longer um time away from home than what the company that i work for now offers um they we we do about two to three weeks out and usually about one to two weeks home with the company that I work for now. So depending on the, the time of season, 
Um, during the winter months, it actually slows down quite a bit for us, whereas a lot of the aerial survey companies are picking up and getting really busy during the winter. And per week, about how many hours are you able to log? Um, when we're on the road, it can be in that 60s, it can be in that 60 hours range. In a week? Yeah, it's a lot of flying. We're flying usually four to five hours a day, flying Monday through Friday or Monday through Sunday, if mm-hmm. everything works well. Um, you know, we don't have, don't have any maintenance issues. We don't have any weather issues. Um, so we're <clears throat> averaging back. It's been about 50 to 70 hours a month for me, um, even averaging in that slower period of time that yep. we've been in. So, and, and what does that translate into? Like, what does a survey pilot earn flying that much? Yeah. So we, um, our pilots earn right about the mid fifties, um, is where we're at. As far as salary goes with full benefits, it's really nice. We get company credit cards, you know, get to choose our hotels. We participate, um, actively in FBO choice. And so the thing I like about survey flying, I think is really valuable for me for the future. Um, because I'm still, I haven't totally decided, like, do I want to go airlines or do I want to go corporate? Mm-hmm. Um, this definitely starts making you think, hey, maybe that maybe that corporate life isn't so bad after all. Um, you know, because you're experiencing those the same FBOs. We go into the same FBOs as a lot of corporate jets do. Um, a lot of those FBOs treat a small little plane like mine the same that they do a jet with mm-hmm. the same level of respect. Um, some don't and you're like, okay, well, that's cool, man. I, I guess I won't come back and visit next time, mm-hmm. but some do. And, um, I remember one, one instance for me in California, um, and just really my hats off to this, um, FBO out in Camarillo, um, California, they do, they go as far as to roll out the red carpet for you. They've got someone offering you a drink as you're getting out of the airplane. Um, just really, really awesome awesome work out there um and this i i can't speak enough good for this fbo would love to go back to them um and would love to go park the plane there again so. yeah so i'll uh before we conclude i want to share something that that i was um that was shared with me by a pilot i talked to so this guy's 70 six i think he's been flying for you know, 40 odd years retired out of the airlines and now he does part 135 work because his his wife doesn't want him home too much and he likes having something to do. But we were talking about variety of things and, and at the high level, one of them was corporate flying. This was his words to me. He says, Trent, 95% of corporate flying is shit. And then 5% (laughs) is absolutely the dream job. So keep that, keep that in mind when you're thinking about your future. And one of my buddies He's in the five percent. Okay, he flies a G two eighty. He gets paid somewhere between two fifty and three hundred thousand a year. He oh. gets his choice of vacation. He works five six days a month um, of flying days, and then you know sometimes he just has to stay on the beach when the yeah. family's doing whatever they're doing. Um, so, for career two point pilots, I just encourage all of you guys to think carefully about you know what's more important to you. Yeah, corporate can be more fun. But if they sell the plane, you don't have a job anymore. Oftentimes you're on call and oftentimes the call out time is pretty short. So it can have a dramatic impact on your, the quality of your life if you don't have the right gig. And that's something I spend a lot of time thinking about, as I suspect many people who are watching this video, you know, we're not career 1.0 guys. We've got families, we've got kids, quality of life's important. So I just pass that on. Uh, as a as a as a buyer beware um, because uh, he's this guy's got a lot more experience in the industry than I do and so I was inclined to listen to what he had to say yeah that's awesome and I totally agree too like I think that's part of the awesome thing we can do um, as you know career 2.0 guys I think we kind of do a little bit better than career 1.0 guys Um, finding those more experienced guys that we find in our paths and be like hey man I've got this opportunity or I've got this thing going on. So really finding those people that can be mentors for us yeah, um, and be like, Hey, 
you know, what do you think? Should I do this or should I not do this? Um, I joke with people that I've got a bad habit um, of making DP, DPEs friends. Um, I've taken two designated pilot examiners, including the guy that failed men's from a ride and, made, and turned them into friends. Um, we still keep in touch to this day. Um, I <clears throat> see one of them on a weekly basis. And the other one I see every couple months or so. Um, one of them I've had the opportunity to fly a Citation jet with. Um, yeah. SIC sit next to them. Um, cool. So these are are valuable things, I think. And you alluded to this as well with the, with the guy that you know, is keeping those people in your life that um, can inspire you, drive you, mm -hmm. and really cause you to stop and think as well. Um, like you said, you know, career point 2.0 guys, we've got the kids at home. We've got a mortgage now to support in many cases. We're, we're living real life already. And we're getting this opportunity to do this awesome thing called aviation, which yeah. for a lot of us, um, at least for me, when I'm flying, there's no better job. It's a beautiful office. I've got very little um, people breathing down my neck and mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm out there having a great time. Um, and I hope that that never changes, whether I fly for the airlines or whether I fly for corporate. Um, I just hope that that never changes, you know, that I, every day I'm like, Hey, all right, we're going fine today. And you get that point, you're out the runway, you line your plane up, you take off and you're just like, man, this is a great day. You know, you do my, I'll do my best to avoid being one of those bitter guys that is angry at life. Yeah. Vern, thank you very, on behalf of myself and everybody on the fly with Trent channel, thank you very much for making some time to come and share your story with us. I hope that it is uh, educational and inspirational for some of the other people that watch the channel and uh, guys and gals who are watching. If you have questions for myself or for Vern, that's what the comments right down below is for. Um, and uh, so please do go ahead. And even if it's just an attaboy or a thanks a lot, the more comments that we get under the video, the more it just tells the YouTube algorithm that if this was a, a worthwhile video and it will show it to more pilots. So for that, you have my gratitude. And if this is your first time watching the channel and maybe you'd like to get notifications of other videos, make sure you uh, consider liking uh, or, or rather subscribing and clicking that little bell on YouTube. All right, Vern. Thanks very much, my friend. Thanks, Trent. I appreciate it, man.